everyone, I'm Amani, one half of AA, and I'm here to keep you up to date on what's been going on at BCPS. It's getting a little chilly outside, so grab a hot cup of chocolate and spend some time with us as we jump right into the show. Have you heard that Jacksonville Elementary School is feeling a little blue? Now, not in a bad way, but for becoming the 26th Maryland Blue Ribbon School. Let's check out what has made them a winner. Jacksonville really is just a family. Good morning. It's a family of teachers and our parents and students. We come to school here every day. You want us to hold? <laughs> Good morning. And we take care of each other, we learn, we challenge each other. We are a school that cares for others, cares for others in the community, and it's a place to take risks and challenge ourselves and learn. Let me spell that. Becoming a Blue Ribbon School means everything. Uh, I've been wanting this award for so many years. I was a parent here many, many years ago. I'm a grandparent here now, in addition to being a kindergarten teacher. I've been here at this school for 24 years, and I am thrilled that we have finally gotten this award. Having been here 25 years ago, I feel so special to be the PTA president and be involved as part of the school and to see all the amazing things that are happening here every day. Now getting to celebrate it alongside of my children is something that I will never forget. Even talking to my parents about that. Um, it just felt like a whole family thing. This school has been part of my life. I student taught here a little bit while I was in college and now I'm here with my kids. So I just love this school and everything about it. It was really affirming and it kind of reinforced the hard work that we're doing here at Jacksonville. So, uh, uh. I think it really reinforces that we're identifying students' individual needs earlier. We are working collaboratively as a resource team and as an entire school just to help the kids when the help is needed rather than waiting. Jacksonville is so special because we have great teachers and we want a blue ribbon. My teachers are special at Jacksonville Elementary because they're nice, helpful, and they give us hard work. Wow, you're going to have some fun reading this week. How do we do challenging ourselves? Mm -hmm. Here at Jacksonville, our students visit our leveled library because literacy is very important for us. We have our students go and select books not only on their level but on an advanced level so that they can extend their skills in reading. Reading is the basis really of all learning. In math, our fourth grade students are all exposed to the advanced academics math curriculum and that allows them to be better prepared for middle school. Jacksonville prepares us for middle school because they let us transition in between classes just like you would in middle school. They give us work that's a grade level ahead and they answer our questions just as well as they can. It is so exciting to be recognized for all of the hard work that our teachers and students do here in the building. It really is a place that I think students are successful. Teachers love to come to work. It's just left to the left to the right to the right up or down up or down a great place to be. What a cool school and a great staff. But that seems to be the makeup of BCPS. We ventured over to another elementary school that has a strong family community and a unique atmosphere. Glenmar is community. Glenmar is striving for excellence. Glenmar is resilient. Glenmar is growing and learning. Glenmar is full of laughter, students learning, students thriving, teachers cooperating. Glenmar is home. So here at Glenmar Elementary School, we pride ourselves in building positive relationships between staff and students, students and students, as well as staff and staff. We also work with our students in building a classroom community by doing community circles in the morning. So each morning after breakfast in our morning announcements, 
our teachers and our students come together to do a prompt just like I model with my staff on Mondays and Fridays, but they do it every single day. And they talk about various topics and it gives the, op the students the opportunity to share before their school day begins. And our last thing that we really focus on this year is reading. And we know in order for you to become a better reader, you have to read every single day. So we drop everything and read. And we make it a big production by doing an announcement from the front office with a drum beat. And we have staff that are with us. And we do a chant of drop everything and read. And what this does is it gets everyone in our building reading, not just our students, but our teachers, our paraeducators, the administrators, the secretaries, the custodians, the cafeteria staff, the resource staff, anyone that's in our building during that time will stop what they're doing and read. So Glenmar is home for us. Preparing our children for the future hinges on the foundation of our teachers. Recently, nearly 300 BCPS middle and high school students attended the Educators Rising Conference, where they participated in professional development sessions, met with local colleges and employers. Let's look at what they learned. And yet, so often in the classroom, teachers will dismiss the students that are failing or struggling. Say, I don't know what's wrong with her. I don't know why he doesn't work a little harder. Like, well, maybe what we need to do is have a conversation with that student. This is the second annual Baltimore County Public Schools Educators Rising Conference. And this is a conference for students who are considering careers in education. We have 19 middle and high schools represented, about 300 students participating in workshops related to careers in education today. Educators Rising is a national organization that supports high school students and middle school students who are interested in becoming classroom teachers in their future. I'm going to challenge you. You are a teacher for one day and you're a perfect, amazing teacher. Think about the best teacher you've ever had. You're better than that person. And so how would you use something like sticks and spoons or another practice that you had um, or you've seen in your class? How would you use that in your class? Workshops range from career preparation to social justice to equity issues to determining an appropriate career pathway in education for students. I had two workshops. One was in how to basically teach reading to elementary schoolers and the other was in Muslim American history. I much preferred the Muslim American history because it was it got into facets that I did not understand or did not know. It also gives students an opportunity to compete in education related topics. For example, students are giving TED Talk like presentations on why they want to be educators. They are um, presenting children's literature, books that they've written and illustrated, original works. Um, they are also doing things like preparing lesson plans and solving ethical dilemmas in education. Some kids won't come to school. Some kids will cut class. Some kids will act erratic. Some kids will have literally partial mental breakdowns. I want to be a teacher because I think that there is a new outlook on the world, and especially with all the upcoming technology, I can show kids that, yes, you can be like me, and yes, you can be somebody from my background, and you can be, become something as a teacher, and they can understand you. What we want students to know is that education is a great career pathway and that this really is a way for them to make a difference in their communities and in the world. And they can change the lives of students in the community through a career in education. I would want to be a teacher because I believe it's, you need, to, you need an educated public in order to have an educated society. And to properly educate the youth means we'll have properly educated adults, which in turn, it it's, it's an open system. Overall, education is the bedrock for most of our problems that could be solved. What a worthwhile event. So, in the mood to bust some moves? Well, that's what many fifth grade students from around the county are engaged in. Ballroom dancing. Cha-cha. Merengue, swing, tango, although at times a little awkward and a little twisted up, students at Fullerton Elementary School were all in for a little ballroom dancing. 
So this week at Fullerton, the fifth graders are doing the ballroom dance program. Um, they're partnering with a teammate um, and learning a dance. Um, it's, a, it's an adjustment period for sure because we are connecting in a new way that most of them have never done before. So there's a little bit of an adjustment period. But once they learn how to do that the correct way and the polite and proper way, they figure out, oh, this is just another activity that I get to do with a friend, and they relax into it and get a focus on the dancing part, which I always explain to them, that's the fun part. Plant your knees, and just wiggle your knees if you're doing your knees. Great, knots. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm going My first reaction was I was pretty nervous. I was kind of scared, too because I never had to dance before. I like that you get to try something new and you don't have just have one partner, you get to have to try like multiple partners. I think ballroom dancing or partner dancing is so important because it gives them a way to interact with each other that is very unique that a lot of kids their age don't get a chance to do and a lot of people don't get to do throughout their lifetime. The dances that we learn on Mondays, we usually introduce them to a really easy dance called the merengue. It's a social Latin dance that is done in many Latin countries and it's just marching in place as long as you're marching. You can do it. Um, and it's really fun. We dance to really fun music. And then we do other Latin social dances. We do the cha-cha-cha. Sometimes we do um, the tango. And then we do my personal favorite, which is swing dancing. Um, and it's just fun. It gets their brain working. It gets them thinking in a new and different way and interacting with another human in a new and different way. It gets them thinking in a new and different way. Um, it makes me feel proud that I actually went through it. And it was kind of fun, too. Ball and dance was all good. Well, that does it for this edition of At BCPS In Depth. We sure did have some neat stories to share. If you have any story ideas, comments, or suggestions, contact us at bcps-tv at bcps.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and with the BCPS Now mobile app. Until next time, I'm Amani. Thanks for watching.